Hey everyone, welcome to the Nevermore Tavern. Uh, today in the video we're doing, we're, I'm going to start a series, we're doing the uh, Buddhist Reads the Quran. And with me today I have the Quran in English. It's a modern English translation, clear and easy to understand. This is translated by Talal Itani, and it's out of Dallas, um, Lebanon. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Dallas Beirut, published by Clear Quran. Um, I'm not sure how far we're going to get to it. Uh, chapter one's pretty short, chapter two's pretty long, so we're going to trudge on through. I'm going to give you my thoughts as we're reading through it, and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> So, chapter 1, the opening. Al-Fatiha. In the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. Praise be to God, Lord of the worlds. The most gracious, the most merciful. Master of the day of judgment. It is you we worship, and upon you we call for help. Guide us to the straight path. The path of those you have blessed, not of those who... The path of those you have blessed, not of those against whom they are in anger, nor of those who are misguided. Pretty straightforward. Not really much to say there. Um, so. so, the Haifer al-Baqarah, in the name of God, the gracious, the merciful. Alif Lam Mim. This is the book in which there is no doubt a guide for the righteous. Those who believe in the unseen and perform the prayers and give what we have provided for them. And those who believe in what was revealed to you and in what was revealed before you and the certain of the hereafter. Like I said, so far it's pretty straightforward, you know, telling you what the book's going to be. I'm, I'm not seeing an issue here. I, I'm kind of confused because you hear a lot of things about Islam and the Quran and whatnot that it's a... Uh, it's supposed to be a book of peace, but there's, a, you know, the jihadists and, and the Shiites and the Sunnis where they're, they're very violent type of people. And, and so we're, I'm going to hope to see as we go through this, whether or not we can make a good connection or, or try to dispel some beliefs in, in what the Quran actually says. So we'll continue on here. Okay, it says, uh, these are upon guidance from their Lord. These are the successful. As for those who disbelieve, it is the same for them. Whether you have warned them or not have warned them, they do not believe. God has set a seal on their hearts and on the hearing and over their vision in their veil. They will have severe torment. Not too much different from the Bible. Those who don't believe in God are going to hell. Among the people are those who say, We believe in God in the last day. But they are not believers. They seek to deceive God and those who believe, but they deceive none but themselves, though they are not aware. In their hearts is a sickness, and God has increased their sickness. They will have a painful punishment because of their denial. That's a little rude. Just because someone doesn't believe in, in your particular religion doesn't necessarily mean they should be punished eternally. Um, or, or, sorry, increase their sickness. And it's, it's really not all that different than, than what the Bible says. So we'll just continue traveling on. And when it is said to them, do not make trouble on earth, they say, we are only reformers. In fact, they are the troublemakers, but they are not aware. Kind of hard to fix it if you're not aware that you're being a troublemaker. And when it is said to them, believe as the people have believed, they say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? In fact, it is they who are the fools, but they do not know. And when they come across those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We are only ridic uh, ridiculing. Just because you don't understand somebody's belief doesn't mean you should ridicule. I mean, I, I get that, you know. 
I'm not sure how where this is going, but we'll, hopefully it reveals a little bit more. It's a lot of to me. It's just it's a lot of unnecessary wording, but okay. But like I said I'm not a studier of the Quran or Muslim. Uh, Muslim. <laughs> I'm not a studier of the Islam or the Quran. That's why we're doing this, so we can try to understand. It is God who ridicules them and leaves them bewildered in their transgression. See, I don't. Why would you? Never mind. And it, no, I'm gonna say it. Why would you believe a God that would ridicule you? Uh, it, that to me makes no sense. But you know, if, if you're gonna believe in a deity. It shouldn't be one that's just going to continue to ridicule you or, or hit you with a sickness. You know, it should be someone that's that's going to try and, or some being that's going to try to convince you, you know, that they're right, that, that they're, you know, they can lead you down the straight and narrow, but to, to automatically, I mean, we're only, what, 14 sections in to, to chapter two, and we've already been told, that our heart will have a sickness. We are being ridiculed. It's not looking good. Those are they who have bartered error for guidance. But their trade does not profit them. And they are not guided. Their likeness is that of a person who's kindled the fire. When it illuminated all around them. God took away their light and left them to darkness unable to see. Deaf, dumb, and blind. They will not return. Or, like the cloud burst from the sky, in which is darkness and thunder and lightning, they press their fingers into their ears from the thunderbolts in fear of death. But God surrounds the disbelievers. Okay, basically from what I'm getting there is it's, you know, God surrounds us all whether you believe him or not. Let's see, the, the lightning almost snatches their sight away. Whatever it illuminates for them, they walk in it. But when it grows dark over them, they stand still. Had God willed, he could have taken away their hearing and their sight. God is capable of everything. Okay. O oh, people, worship your Lord who created you and those before you that you may attain piety. He who made earth the habitat for you and the sky a structure and sends water down from the sky and brings out fruits thereby as a sustenance for you. Therefore do not assign rivals to gods while you know. I understand that, that this is a belief in God, but there are other religions out there that, that believe it's not God that brings down the lightning. It's not God that brings out the fruit. And to claim, and see that that's part of my problem, is a religion will claim they are the true religion and every other religion is wrong. And I don't believe that, you know, that, that that's a, a right thing. Everybody has their belief system. Everybody will find something different. So I'm, I'm going to continue here, probably go, we'll do three more and then we'll stop it here. Uh, I don't want to get too far in it because I want to kind of reflect on what's going on. And if you are in doubt about what, we have revealed to our servant, then produce a chapter like these and call your witnesses apart from God if you are truthful. But if you do not, and you will not, then beware the fire whose fuel is people and stones prepared for disbelievers. So, okay, I can read this. I'm not sure what is meant, but reading this, I can, I can see it as, if you do not believe, the people that will believe are... are going to burn you and stone you um i'll read it again just but if you do not and you will not then beware the fire whose fuel is people and stones prepared for the disbelievers okay maybe not the fire part but it, it the it, it fuels the people and their stones so i think this is our first indication of stoning which i understand happens a lot in in the islam um, one last chapter and we're going to end it. And give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will have gardens beneath which rivers flow. Whether they are provided with fruit, therefore substance, that they will say, this is what we were provided with before, and they will be given the like of it. And they will have pure spouses therein, and they will abide therein forever. I, okay, I, I, I kind of understand part of that. Um, like I said, I'm hoping as we go trudge along through this some more, 
stench some more will be become clear the the pure spouses i'm guessing that's gonna lead on to the the, the what is it 70 virgins or whatnot but so far so good i mean it's it's you know we're we're 25 verses into chapter 2. I think there's like 200 and something verses in just chapter 2. So, we'll, we'll trudge on as we go on and see we, what we can't learn and, and what we can discuss about it. I'm not finding much of an issue as a Buddhist myself with what I've read so far in the Quran. Um, that may change. Like I said, I'm, I, I don't know the Quran. That's why we're doing this. So... If you want to listen to me ramble on some more and continue reading the Quran, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that dingy dingy notification bell so you get notified when when we continue on down this journey. So, until next time, be water, my friends.